Hello, I'm Dali Noti. I'll present a joint work with Vasily Silkanis. We consider bid prediction in sponsored search auctions, which are the auctions that the search engines use in order to sell these ad slots near the search results on a web page like this one here. So every time some user enters a search query, the search engine conducts an auction between all advertisers who bid for that query to determine how to allocate the slots to the advertisers and how much each one should pay. And a critical problem in this marketplace is to be able to predict how will bidders respond to market changes. So we have some series of auctions and at some point there is a change and we would like to be able to predict bidding behavior after the change. And one possibility is to take an unstructured approach to this problem and treat it as a time series forecasting problem. But then we can potentially overfit to the current market to the behavior before the change. And here we suggest we take a structured approach based on economic and econometric theory, and in particular to use econometric methods for learning agents. And we will see that this approach can be useful for bid prediction, in particular to be useful to predict bids after a change in the market. So let's start with the setting. At each auction period T, we have NT bidders competing on M slots, each is associated with a different clicks for rate. And each bidder I submits his bid per click at time T. And then the auction rule decides on the slot and the cost per click for each bidder based on the vector of bid. Now the exact auction rule will be less important for us now. What's more important are, are these two counterfactual curves that the search engine computes for each bidder. And these are also available to the advertisers to optimize our bids. These are the click and the cost per click curves. These are functions of the bid of the player. And they say what could be his results for different possible bids that he could place at time t. And they're computed against uh, the uh, uh, competition in the auction. So in fact, they summarize the competition in the auction and we will see how we can use them to predict uh, bidding behavior in the future. So this is our goal. We will like to uh, predict the bids for player I bids B T plus one up to some capital T in two different settings. First, we consider the basic in sample setting where there is no particular change in the data. And the second is the covariate shift setting. And here, because there was a change at time t. And for each of these two settings, we consider two forecasting tasks. The first is what we call the one step ahead prediction task. And here, for each future time tau, we forecast uh, the bids uh, for the bidder based on all bids and the two counterfactual curves up to time tau minus one. So here, we just predict one step at every time. The second is a series prediction task. And here we are allowed to use bids only uh, until time t, which is until the change in the covariate shift setting. And this is like training an agent to bid for the advertiser based on all data up to time t. And then the agent continues and uh, bid for the uh, advertiser based against reality. And he is still allowed to use uh, the curves until time tau minus one. And we suggest to take the uh, structural econometric approach for the beast prediction task. And for that, we need to first model the objectives that the bidders optimize, and then also the approaches that they use to achieve this objective. So as an objective, we are going to make the standard economic assumption that uh, bidders are utility maximizers, and that the utility of a bidder from each auction is this quasi-linear utility function, which is the value per click of the bidder minus his payment per click, times the expected number of clicks that it gets as time uh, t. And to compute that, we first need to estimate uh, for the bidder his value per click from the data. And how do the bidders optimize our bids? The traditional approach is to assume that the bidder best responds to the bid competition in the previous step. And here we will take an alternative approach that uh, assumes that models bidders as no regret learners which means that they choose their bids such that the regret against submitting any fixed bid in hindsight vanishes to zero with game periods. It means that they act in a way that in the long run, they have low regret. And in the online learning literature, there are various algorithms uh, that have this no regret uh, property, and we will study here several of them. We will mainly focus on the online gradient descent, ODD, that simply says that the bidder updates his bid at every step in the direction of the gradient of his utility from the previous step at his previous bid uh, with step size eta. And we will estimate eta for each player from, from his data. 
And we also consider three additional algorithms that differ in terms of the regularization terms that they use and also whether the bidder responds to the full history of auctions or just to the recent history. And for each of these no regret algorithms, we will estimate the value per click for a player uh, based on the no regret modeling assumption. And here we compared two estimation methods that were suggested in the literature. The mean we get estimate that suggests us that the value estimate for the player um, as the value that minimizes his regret curve, just take this minimal point. And we compare that with the quantum regret estimation methods that considers a range of possible values with weights that are exponentially decreasing with the regret. And we found empirically that the quantum regret estimates are more stable and consistent than their mean regret estimates. So we will use uh, the quantum regret estimate as a value per click for the player uh, in our analysis for all methods. And then once we have the uh, estimate for the value per click, we estimate the step size eta for a player just as a value that minimizes uh, the error on the state training set. And we evaluate these econometric-based no-regret methods uh, based on two weeks of bidding data from the Bing Ads platform of Microsoft. Uh, for each bidder, we have the bid that he made and the auction results for each auction, and also the cost and the click uh, counterfactual data points uh, that were generated by the Gini system. Now, each, uh, each bidder participated in many auctions, so we aggregated data at our level for each bidder. And let's look at these graphs. They can give us some sense on the kind of data that we analyzed and also on how difficult the prediction task is going to be. Um, in the middle, we can see the distribution of the bids in the data set. And you can mainly see here that the bids were very diverse and they spent several orders of magnitude. And on the right, we see the distribution of the coefficient of variation of bids and uh, across bidders. And we see here that the bidders made significant changes uh, in their bids during the period of time that we consider. All right, now let's start with the in-sample prediction setting. Here we simply take for each bidder the first 90% of its bids for training, and then we test on the last 10%. And we are going to compare with the following machine learning methods. Uh, we have a linear model, a random forest model, and also a network model, MLP. And all of them receive as input the two recent bids that the bidder made. And we also compare with the profit model of Facebook. And these are the comparison results. We see here the distribution of the MAPE error, the mean absolute percentage error across bidders in both the series and the step ahead prediction tasks. And what we see here is that in this basic in-sample setting, where there is no particular change between the training and the test periods, the machine learning methods indeed predict quite well in both settings. And we also see that the econometric-based ODD achieves comparable results. It does have higher error in the series prediction, but the gap is not large. We do see, however, that the best replies denoted by BR is significantly inferior to the ODD and to the machine learning methods. So now let's now compare the econ methods. And what we see here on the right is that the no regret methods outperform the traditional best reply approach. And when we compare the best reply with the follow the leader, we see that indeed it improves the performance when we consider, we consider bidders who respond to the full history rather than just to the previous step. And an even larger improvement is obtained when we add a regularization term. And this we can see by the large improvement of the BR reg over the best reply, simple best reply. All right, now to the second covert achieved setting. Here we want to evaluate the prediction performance when there is a change in the data. And for that, we are going to consider the day night setting. We subselect days from the data where the day bids were significantly higher than the night bids. And we are going to use the low bids during the night for training and the higher bids uh, during the day for test. And this uh, leaves us with 762 days for prediction. And here we see that uh, indeed they were lower in the night and higher in the day. And these are again the comparison results. These are the error distributions. 
And here it is very clear that in this setting where there is significant change between the training and the test periods, so the econometric based OGD outperforms these uh, unstructured machine learning methods in both the step ahead and the series prediction tasks. And the difference is statistically significant in uh, almost all comparisons. We also see that the best reply, which was inferred to the other methods in the previous setting, now achieves comparable results to the other, uh, to the machine learning methods. Now let's see uh, two examples for how the predictions of the OGD and the machine learning methods look like. These are two examples from 10 a.m. It predicts up until 9 p.m. In blue, we see the true bids that the player made in each of these two examples. And you can see that the OGD predictions, these are the orange uh, lines. So OGD manages to predict quite close to the true bids. However, the machine learning methods predict too low. They just fail to adapt to the change that the bidder uh, increased his bid during the day and just continue and predict too low uh, in the level of bids that they were trained on. So this demonstrates how in the cooperative setting, it is better to react to the economic feedback than to the bid history that is no longer relevant. Now, uh, we also tried to give economic feedback similar to the feedback that the econometric based uh, Norigret methods receive, also to the machine learning methods. And we saw that in the in sample prediction setting, this additional economic features did not improve uh, the performance. Uh, so we see here that in a setting when there is no change between the training and the test, the bid information is a sufficient predictor for future behavior. However, in the cooperative setting, we see that the additional economic features were useful also for the machine learning methods, and especially for the network uh, model that now achieves a performance that is uh, similar, is, is much closer to the OGD. And finally, uh, we show that the performance of the OGD can be further improved if we consider leaders who, instead of optimizing the standard quasi-linear utility function, optimize a, a utility function that incorporates some uh, visibility bias component. And uh, we show that uh, OGD that considers uh, these biased leaders uh, achieves significantly better prediction results compared to the OGD that considers the uh, usual uh, quasi-linear utility maximizing um, uh, bidders. So this may suggest uh, potentially better auction designs that incorporate value per impression considerations. All right, now let's just conclude. So we saw that as long as everything is usual, there is no particular change between the training and the test period, then the time series machine learning methods are useful for the prediction. And we also saw how the econometric based no regret methods achieve, achieve comparable results. But then we also saw how when there is a significant change uh, between the training and the test time, the machine learning methods fail to adapt to the change. And here we see the significant advantage of these econometric based methods. And we also saw how the econ feedback can be also useful uh, for the machine learning methods in this setting. And we also saw that uh, the no regret learning approach outperforms traditional best reply approach. And in the end, we saw that uh, their performance uh, can be even further improved by considering bidders with a visibility bias. And this opens many research directions, including different algorithms that uh, we can use for prediction or the, like about the underlying modeling assumptions and also about estimation methods uh, and more. Thank you very much for listening.